before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the check again. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Don't mention it. But also, don't forget it. I'm just kidding, of course. He's not. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant, be very worried. I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this, Mr. Dubois, he keeps repeating. 
What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. What an odd demonstration of... Huh, you got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. With my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. It's Harry. Harry Dubois. And I can work with you, Harry. Now, what else can I do for you? But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st and you live in Jamrock. You're a Jamrock boy. A long way from home, but that's okay. He doesn't really seem to know any more about it. Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man, do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? Well, yes. I'm sure you're going to make one little boy or a girl very happy and proud one day, Harry. Harry, you're not simply a cop, you're a star. A bright shining star in the drab law enforcement sky, outshining all other stars. You're a superstar. Of course I do, Harry. And I'm gonna help you shine. I'm gonna put you on all the big stages, your name in giant neon letters. Harry Dubois. The giant neon sign reading, Harry Dubois, hanging from the Cavalson crane, can be seen all the way to Jamrock. Somewhere in Mirova, a beautiful woman sees the bright glow on the horizon and says to herself, oh my God, I shouldn't have left him. Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into, Haha, you guys are so corrupt. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you, because it's not a real RCM folder. 
It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age... Rubbish, Harry. Rubbish. I mean, look at you. For your age, you are obviously in peak physical condition. A real silverback. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Yes, thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed factored in that you pawned it. Now please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry, relax. I have great guys on this. You focus on what's important, building our relationship for the good of Martinez. It did not come as a surprise to him. He might actually not be bullshitting. Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. Of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help like I'm helping you with your lost gun. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me, but there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colours, Harry. <laughs> this really is very simple and there's nothing shady about it. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? 
A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. I don't know what that means, Harry. Shady brew. There are so many moving parts in my operation, I can't keep track of them all. You know what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. Surprise me. Just one thing. If you can, make it even shadier. He sincerely has no idea what you were talking about. And he doesn't care either. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. We're all trying to do what's best for Martin Aids. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you find your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. Harry! I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. This particular brand of humor he has, it makes for a fine distraction. Yes, yes. Low balling, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everard doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbour. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. 
Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Jamais vu. Derealization. Jamais vu. The opposite of déjà vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having. And for who knows how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is a fundamental question. Absolutely. I'm always willing to help out nice fellows such as yourself. since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. How do you like our harbor? You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably.
Okay, but where did you get the key from? He's not going to tell you, cause he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everard. Who he is, and what they're fighting for. This is interesting. This seditious talk sounds like communism. Just so we're on the same page, communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grava. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. The look in his brown eyes conjures up an understanding. For him, having command of his time is the most important thing. It all comes together now. The way he speaks about scabs, his general attitude. He's a follower of a 500-year-old Franco-Nigerian Boyadero code, itself an appropriation of Vespertine cool. That of a noble peasant or a traveling herdsman. True to yourself, Independent in your actions, loyal to your friends. He's not lying about not doing it himself. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. 
your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears with Let me handle this. Detective disorientated. Are you still wondering where you are? This is Martinez, in case you've forgotten. I advise you not to overstay your welcome. Her entire character has shifted. This young woman is cold as ice. That's right. I am not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. So let's get to it. You're looking for Titus Hardy? You think he has information that will help you? Maybe he does. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. Aggressive, you make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Just dock workers? Do dock workers spy on the police? We let you off easy, miss. Don't think it will happen again. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishol. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all, and you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. Look, a comedian, do your job, ask your questions, then get out of Martinez.
Whoa, what have we here? A bridge with loose nails and rot-infested wood that creaks in the wind. A construction code violation if there ever was one. This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in? Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for. But every day tells you something new about yourself. Apparently, Working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. The lieutenant merely nods in response. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. The sound of the key turning still echoes in the yard. Hopefully no one heard. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. You have. And how did you like Mr. Clare? You are an honourable man, way above the money I could offer. So I won't even try, and of course, I do not expect you to share anything Everard told you with me, not being a corrupt worm myself. However, if you felt like passing some information, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Did you now? What sort of borscht is he making? You're right, detective. 
That whole undertaking was very unimportant. Why did we do it? Beyond curious. I will choose to interpret that as you turning the alcohol in the strike brew down. For the sake of our professional relationship. And because I don't like the idea of them any more drunk than they already are. What else? Oh. That's so... helpful of him. The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. He's able to contain the anger and surprise. When I said, be wacky, I didn't mean wildly, grossly irresponsible and damaging to the RCM. And conventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this, to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. Incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? Ah, uh, yes. As you said. Please, don't get him in a loop. If he gets in a loop, it will last forever. Ask him to say something else, please. That's wrong. You don't get into loops. Totally slanderous. Maybe you've gotten into one tiny loop once. Of course. Thank you for the advice. I'm glad you are here to assist. Your other dealings with Everard are still of considerable interest to me. The Lieutenant will be more lenient toward sharing those, hopefully. Of course, Detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. What is all of this? The scent, the sound, the air. What world? The only one, I suppose. The world of matter. And its pale antipode. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. Great bodies of water. Forest-covered surfaces. Clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough. There is a term of endearment they coined for it, in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. Elysium. It does. There are those who would call it hell. A term of hatred that originates like many such things with the Mesk Petro fascists. Oh, you want a picture of the world? There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside, sideways. We used to think it was a sphere, but that is
You may have misimagined it. I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's... it's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very... disco. You'd love it. See? Everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world, however wasted its opportunities. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing there, on whatever this all is. Your arms hang down by your sides. The lieutenant observes. The bow collector. It's early in the morning. The world is dark blue. The sparks light her face. A delicate composition of triangles. The streets seem to grow longer, like in a dolly zoom. And there's something in the air as you stand there and wave back at the shapes growing smaller and smaller. Something that has always been there. A great see-through world. The tenderness you feel. The ghost of Revachol between you, carrying your signals. The Holy Messenger. This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. Probably some kit. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word Onuk written on the other side, with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis, or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonassian church, a star, a great moral height to be strived towards. 
The church looks old and weather-worn. There are no lights in the windows. Around the large wooden building you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach and a small tent set up on the ice. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? Yes, the Debardieu's union pays me to stand vigil during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and... money is tight. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, officer, René is the kind of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, seek it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. I'm fine, God damn it! Mind your own business! <sighs> it's nothing. Just got to cut back on coffee. No one. The bus has been unmanned since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officers. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Evrard created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated Kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. Can we conclude the topic of my guard boost now? She... is nobody. This is none of your concern, and I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu, and she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway, so might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. Wandering man, how can I help you? descent has only worsened since the last so
purity and Tesla-centric culture. Inbreathing has led to a lactose intolerant subrace whom no one can take seriously. Colorful tassels are, let's be honest, not a good satorial choice for this century. You might want to avoid wooden clogs too. The Vesper times and Messinians of Vesper and Messina, the ancient Meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Pisantic Sea, the Suren of Sur la Clé, and even the North Königsteiners. Trained-eyed Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a ham sandwich. But look into their eyes and you will see. They are of an indistinct color, and so is their skin. Unhealthy, muddy, and ashen. The Koiko, the countless micronationalities of Grad, are all inexplicably obsessed with Podat. The only thing they like more is dividing into microscopic ethnostates, like political amoeba. Wouldn't he be one for ethnostates? <laughs> they are microscopic. The Semeno Areopagite Superstate will cover the entire remaining planetary crust, uninterrupted.
trade roots and potato acid. The prime component of the potato plant. Enough of Tibet mediocrity. Tips the FRA Museum of Failed Chimeric Experiments and Tragic Maladaptations. They are tortured creatures waiting to be put to sleep. Your morbid interest in them worries me. Lesser races like the Mesquito, a grotesque mixture of a mask woman and a Seminese man. Only possible if the mother is mask and the father Seminese. The other way around, they fail to produce offspring. The Mesquito is born sterile, like a donkey. All they have left is to ride customized motor carriages with hydraulic suspension, listening to aggressive El Mariachi music to vent their impotent despair. It seems unlikely that two human beings produce genetically sterile offspring. You are right. You have misunderstood. You lack basic phylogenetic education. Then there is the Simino Koiki Chimera. Are you sure you wish to know of the Simino Koiki Chimera? It is not an aesthetic sight. The Koiko, as you know, are very servile, especially when they meet the rich man. Racial scientists have toyed with the idea of crossing the Simonese with the Koiko to produce a super worker of Seminese strength and grad servility. This will never happen. The Simonese and the Koiko may have similar interbreeding problems as the Mesquito. We will never know precisely. No Simonese man could maintain an erection in the suffocating potato stench of a Koiko woman or Koika. But enough. It is cruel to entertain ourselves with the deformities of Tipse F. Were there any able-bodied races you needed education on? You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You have not even worded the mystery, let alone solved it. You need to internalize what you have heard here today, then return to me. This clarity does not come instantly. I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss, Tibere Vasholian. Your love for disco music and venereal disease? Oh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront international capital. Something your race, my Vistic communists, never did. He looks toward the harbor, motionless. The tattoos on his face like a web of stone. The unpromising race pupil returns. The already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes you.
Mr. Dubois, every worker. <laughs> Mr. Dubois, so be it. How can I help you today? What? Did I? Well done then, Harry. I like not knowing about it, and I'm sure you made the right call. I spend the whole day delegating tasks, and it's a great relief to see people taking initiative. I don't even want to know what all of that means. Brew, shady, alcohol, turned off. I'm going to let the world surprise me. I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? He's trying to figure out if you're lying. You're right, Harry. You only had to unlock the door. Which you did. So we're all good here. He was testing you. And you succeeded. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is going to start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is going to be good. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild Pines, sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? A security contractor? Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire? He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Salamaritsa, you name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical, and so is the village, but the mercs and their brutality are very real. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. Yes, I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry? What you need to realize is, we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. Potentially, Harry, potentially. We got arm wrestling champions, rowing club people, ex-coal miners, tough guys, all ready to spring into action for their home base. There's a militant wing inside the Union, a group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. That sounds a bit like organized crime. They're like you guys. Idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again, that sounds like organized crime. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, 
socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. <laughs> I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Wait, the girl by the whirling, who was keeping an eye on you, is he talking about her? I did that, didn't I? She thinks of herself as a guerrilla fighter. These middle-class kids and the books they read are crazy, Harry. I think she would rather be an insurgent than a lawyer. I hope it's a phase. How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. That does sound quite unlikely, yes. The big guy leading the scabs at the gate is colossal. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them. Exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martin A's and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. But of course, it's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. You can now go and tell Titus about this. See what he has to say. Also, Harry, here's five real. I'm not giving you anything. I'm just holding out five real. Oh, I wasn't offering it to you, just holding it out there. But I'm willing to share information. Was there anything else? Was it a good talk? I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin A's. And, of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But... It's like I can't completely trust you. Yet. Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just can't. A man of the left. So you have to be a social democrat. He's been hurt too much in the past. By men who aren't social democrats. What does your heart tell you about your lost gun, Harry? Does it tell you to forget about it? Or do you think it wants to be found? I think it's lonely and cold. I think it wants to be found and I have a proposal for you. And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. 
You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. I'm glad you asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth centre in Martin Ames. It will be righteous. We're going to get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. On the coast, Harry, across the canal. There's a cul-de-sac there, a little village they're calling it. A gloomy place. You'll find it. I trust your detective skills, Harry. They are just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth centre designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. Is he absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the street? Am I? Harry, these people, Martin A's is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. We're going to build a youth centre there. The value of their properties goes up and kids have a place to play in. I'm looking out for these people, not pulling the rug from under them, Harry. I'm looking out for all of Martin A's, not just the harbour. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here. You need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I hear there is some trouble with the water lock, but they should fix it by Wednesday morning. Once you have the signatures, mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then we can talk about your gun. Most certainly, Harry. Nothing brightens my day like... By all means, Harry, what's on your mind? See you soon, Debardeur. Just kidding, but not too much. What's this? We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate, political opinions somewhere in Martinez. The air suddenly feels calmer, more transparent in a strangely tender way. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin, but something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the Kingdom of Conscience. It is not a place, it is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. Incrementally. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually, increment by increment. Tisk tisk. Just because you live in the present doesn't mean you have the right to place your needs above the needs of the future. You may never live to see the kingdom of conscience. Your children may not. Even your grandchildren might not. But that's no excuse not to keep working. What rationality. What sang for. Do you believe the status quo is preferable to chaos and bloodshed? Then you've never lived through real chaos. Sometimes, in the face of great disaster, defending the status quo is progress. The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe, partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-ideological and even post-sexual. Slow down, Mr. Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? That's right. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Revachol. When that real democracy kicks in, 
a long time from now, we are all going to be so much happier. Wandering man, how can I help you? The tear machine stands, your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. Uh, wow. I didn't know you worked for the Union, sir. Anything else I can do for you? No, you don't work for the Union. The Union works for you by supplying you with cash. That was easy. Worryingly, so. Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. Wow, a very large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh yeah, the print depicts a muscled man striding toward you. A giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him, other words, Hyeondal burning. Smells like worn cotton and a little old sweat there. Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. You're not imagining it. Photon emissions? What is he talking about?
OK. His theory isn't exactly incoherent, but its logic does suggest some unusual neural activity. Interesting. Very, very unique energies indeed. Geomagnetic ley lines, one might even say. That's dirt cheap. boxes weight on the shelves and your boombox that gold and amber Harmon Walshi stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes Good day to you, officers. A burly man hangs out by the waterlock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the waterlock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. My friend Barry the Butcher is stuck on the other side of the waterlock. I'm keeping him company and eating this salami. From the corner of your eye, you see a man in a yellow shirt and grey overalls waving at you from across the canal. He seems disappointed about the wreckage on the waterlock and the salami. Very good stuff. Anything I can do for you, officer? I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershall. The words, daredevil driver, sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here. Especially a waterlock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Sure thing. It is salty. It is savory. It is chewy. The hangover only makes the salami more tasty. Want some too, officer? Why not? Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. premium class clothes good quality fabrics best retro design save the economy with your style officer save the economy that sounds off haven't you heard officer we've got to be economically conscious recycle your cash keep it in circulation don't buy new things 
बाय इको वेरी कूल दी थैंक्स यू ऑफिसर You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person with no money. Economical but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek. a windbreaker surf it says but also wind summer 100% waterproof and sport all in different typefaces good choice officer mega sporty and it's only 450 for you sir got to prepare for spring time right There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. A boot. These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn officer, you look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for 2 real and 50 cents. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. No, you are definitely not buying those. No, I can't. We can't walk around with you looking like this. Okay, fine. Go ahead. If you want to look like a walking midlife crisis then, who am I to interfere? These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Seraiz plastic, the kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for the show. If anything, These lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils. A UV magnifier. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design, superb material, very cool. UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks. A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hyamdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Between the throne and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire 
casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyeomdao and the Devil Woman. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyeomdao novels. Oh yes, certainly. Another good sale. It is a bestseller for a reason. Shells filter. Shelves full of biographies of famous people, whoever they are. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. It's going to be awfully close to the already existing buildings, almost wall to wall practically integrating them into the youth center. This is either an ominous or cool architectural choice. Hard to say. My money is on cool. Looks like a cubic pyrite. There is no loophole. The simple truth is the current residents are going to lose their street access and for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. Once the construction starts, it will probably take a few months, a year maybe for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. I should have seen it. People will move away on their own accord. Yes, I suppose Cheng always has a price. He is not altogether comfortable with your contribution to progress in this instance. Naked women and giant swords, is that really the best they could come up with? Feels formulaic and derivative. Below, in smaller font, you see the parenthetical, adapted from Man from Eelndal and the Necromancer's Treasure. Man from Eelndal, Lord of Ratka, and Man from Eelndal, the Curse of Nakt Hera. A brazen attempt to bilk fans for more money by splicing together old stories under a new title. People find comfort in familiarity, remembering old experiences, looking at old photos reading old stories.
It is physically impossible for a human being to effectively dual wield Zweihander swords in any kind of real life combat situation. This book makes a mockery of the very idea of good plotting, though something tells you coherence was never the point. For fuck's sake. Considering the sheer amount of different Hiem Dalaman books out there, it's very unlikely you're ever going to find the sequel. Good God, this is some retrograde stuff. When was this shit written? Thank you. 
kingdom of conscience. The kingdom of conscience will be exactly as it is now. Moralists don't really have beliefs. Sometimes they stumble on one, like on a child's toy left on the carpet. The toy must be put away immediately and the child reprimanded. Centrism isn't change, not even incremental change. It is control over yourself and the world. Exercise it. Look up at the sky, at the dark shapes of the coalition airships hanging there. Ask yourself, is there something sinister in moralism? And then answer, no. God is in his heaven. Everything is normal on earth.